one of the most dangerous, let's say, uh, aspect here is that the majority of the people, and especially, of course, politicians, let's say, all around the world, they see it performing arts and culture, if you want, as entertainment, as just entertainment. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to another episode of our Kaya Music Tech uh, video series. Um, today, I'm really excited uh, to be joined by uh, pa Paolo Petrocelli from the Stauffer um, Uh, Academy for Strings in Cremona. Um, he's doing really interesting things there um, around innovation um, in a very interesting uh, way. And I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to chat with him about that. Uh, welcome, Paolo. Hello, Matthias. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you. Um, we have actually uh, never met in person, like with many of the people that, that we are featuring in our series at the moment. Um, uh, this came about as an introduction from a mutual friend um, at Harvard University, Jeffrey Schnapp. And um, uh, it was actually uh, in a slightly different matter. It was about the Future Stage Manifesto. Um, we'll talk about that in a, in a second. But first of all, I think people want to know the beautiful place you're sitting in that we can see in the background. It's not a virtual uh, background. It's a real background. Tell us a little bit about the Stauffer Academy and um, uh, where it is situated. Everything is true here. I can promise <laughs> you that this is real walls. I am sitting here in the Stradivari room. It, uh, one of the main music rooms that we have here at the Stauffer Center for Strings. The Stauffer Center is uh, the very first international music center entirely dedicated to strings. Why? Well, because we are in Cremona, of course, here in Italy. Uh, Cremona is, of course, point of reference for everyone around the world for strings. As we know here, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, Uh, people like Stradivari, Guarneri, Amati, they created uh, the violins, the strings instrument, the violin, viola, cello, double bass, as we know them today. So everything started from this city, and here uh, is placed the Stauffer Academy, uh, which is one, of course, of the uh, main uh, um, music academy, again, entirely dedicated to strings. Uh, what we have created here over the last year is really special. Our foundation, Foundation Stauffer, invested uh, money, time and energy in basically converting an historical palace, this palace, into a new music center, into a campus. Mm -hmm. So it was extremely interesting for me as a manager uh, to deal with this challenge, how we can innovate starting from the past again. How we can actually deal with the cultural heritage, with the tradition, and project everything into the future. Mm -hmm. so this this was a very very you know uh, important challenge for me and for our organization. Uh, but I think that we are going in the right direction. Um, it, it's 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 possible. The uh -huh. main message is actually possible from a small town like Ramona. Uh, with a lot of heritage and history all around, is possible to innovate. Tell me, tell me about this. Uh, what is the most important thing when you want to innovate? Um, and uh, why is it uh, that uh, it seems difficult at first to do it from a small town? I mean, I live in a small town too. Salzburg is not very big either. Um, but maybe talk a little bit about concrete things that you had to overcome if, if, if you want to share that. So, you know, when you start a project from scratch uh, uh, and you have a white paper in front of you, for sure, you have a lot of challenges, but also you don't have any limits, let's say, at least of mm -hmm. imagination. No? But when you start a project, uh, a cultural project in a country like Italy, in a city like Cremona, where you have hundreds and hundreds of years of history, heritage uh, in front of you, Well, you need to, of course, deal with the, with the past, let's say, mm -hmm. and, and find a new connection, a new meaning of the past um, towards the present and the future. Mm -hmm. So this, this was the main challenge here, how we can actually restore a building, an historical bu building, and convert it into an innovative campus. Well, mm -hmm. of course, there are so many different levels of, of you know, um, intervention. You have to... Think, of course, from first of all, from the architectural point of view, 
design point of view, and then, of course, understanding what is going to be the project that you're going to make into this building. So we find, I think, a perfect balance between maintaining, of course, the very, very key historical elements of this palace of this building and bring it back to life. This palace was almost destroyed, was abandoned for 50 years. And this is happening to so many different historical buildings here in Italy because we have so many of them. It's very difficult, of course, for first the government and then the private sector to invest in these buildings and uh, restore them. We did it. Our foundation did it with, uh, I think, uh, quite a lot of courage and um, demonstrated that, that it's possible to bring an historical palace back to life and make it important again for the city and for the community. So we mm -hmm. converted this space, of course, with, with a lot of uh, support from uh, architectures and designers, and we actually implemented many elements of innovation, technological innovation, from the way we make it uh, sustainable here, the mm -hmm. energy, the lights, everything, uh, but also, of course, from the um, very, let's say, uh, dynamic way we can use all the spaces. How our students and artists can move in these fantastic uh, rooms without uh, a sense of being, you know, in a, uncomfortable. Because this is another point, no? Most of the time, especially young people, they feel a little bit uncomfortable in front of the past, in front of the cultural heritage. <laughs> yes, especially as a musician, I do remember that when, when I studied at the Mozarteum University, um, not far from where I sit today, um, you know, you, you have this, this baggage, almost this weight on your shoulder of the great people who came before you. And, and now you try to find your place in this lineage. It is, it is, uh, uh, let's say, um, an imposing thought to 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 have to deal with that as a young person. At the same time, you know, doing things differently doesn't come to mind easily. I mean, you, uh, as a young person, you 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 try to match uh, your own skills with what came before. Maybe even in some areas, supersede what came before. But you're not really thinking about um, something that is actually quite direct and relatively easy and that is do things ve very differently from the past and this way stand out is this something that you believe that um, uh, an uh, academy uh, should also um, teach students or show students the way that um, uh, you can actually be very different and be successful how do you balance that with sort of the historical uh, um, uh, background that uh, a place like a Cremona comes with this was one of the most challenging, you know, aspects for me in developing the project of the center here for many reasons. Well, first of all, our academy, the Stafford Academy, was founded in 1985. So actually, we were active over the last 36 years with so many different activities, masterclasses and workshops. And of course, our academy had a very clear identity of one of the most you know, inspiring Italian music academy, which was, of course, fantastic. We are super proud of what we are doing here, of the music Italian tradition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we also realized that we were not, let's say, um, taking also the opportunity to connect to the world, to project into a more global community our our mission, our activity, and this is what we are doing now. So we are finding the perfect balance here in uh, opening up this heritage, opening up the tradition to the world. So it, it's about actually uh, facilitating access to, to the tradition, to the heritage, while, of course, listening to others, other music culture, or yeah. sharing different experiences of teaching. So definitely there is a strong Italian identity here, but at the same time, we are opening up to so many different kind of teaching experiences, music languages coming from all over the world, mm -hmm. demonstrating that actually this could be a perfect place, a perfect platform because of this history, because of this tradition is perfectly uh, possible, let's say, to, to innovate in this, in this city. And from here, hopefully launching a message to the entire music community. Most of the time, we are also a little bit scared you know, about, okay, this is not possible to change because <laughs> it has been existing for the last 200 years. This is the only way to go. 
not true. You know, <laughs> and I believe that uh, again, what we are trying to do here is just to facilitate month after month that uh, artists, students coming from all over the world come here to share their visions, their ideas, their talent. It's, it's a little bit like a, a international think tank um, that you're describing. Uh, you have a very interesting program of um, uh, guest lecturers, um, of um, people you co collaborate with. Uh, one thing caught my eye in that is the um, collaboration you have with the Meta Lab of uh, Harvard University. Um, we've spoken about our common uh, friend, uh, Jeffrey Schnapp. Um, the Meta Lab um, is, is really a special place. Um, tell us a little bit about how you um, came um, to, to um, work together with Jeffrey and, and um, uh, tell us a little bit also about the future uh, stage manifesto that um, I believe you have been uh, working on with Jeffrey and a group of us all in the, in the art space mm -hmm. over the past uh, half year. Uh, well, the collaboration with the, between Stauffer and uh, uh, MetaLab was uh, uh, very, let's say, natural because here we need this kind of organizations and partners that help us to open up, let's say, the horizon, uh, our artistic horizon, which is not just mm -hmm. about playing strings, which of course remains the main focus of our of our academy here, but. To be an artist today, to be a player today, of course, you have to investigate you know, so many different areas uh, like, again, innovation, technology, uh, management, communication. And this is what we are offering here. So beside our principal courses for musical instruments, we offer these workshops, labs, seminars that help our students to think and look ahead as mm -hmm. not just as a player, but as an artist and then also as a citizen. Because what I think is so important is also that to remind our students, musicians of tomorrow, that before being a player, a musician, they are a citizen. And so that's, that's, that's why we are offering all these different kind of uh, programs. Uh, and uh, it's so you know, inspiring to see how our students, they are extremely interested in attending all these courses and they can then absorb so many different inputs and ideas to become a more solid and, a, and aware um, player. Mm -hmm. With Jeffrey Snap, well, I, I met with Jeffrey in one of the thousand webinars we all had uh, <laughs> the very first lockdown. And of course, I was so uh, fascinated by his way of communicating. And, and again, the, the ability that, that Jeffrey has in uh, connecting so many different uh, uh, areas of study in something that is basically the future, the future of how we think, how we make uh, research and how we, we, we connect ideas around the world. And I was so you know, inspired by the work he's doing at the Meta Lab. We joined forces saying, okay, one of the challenge also that the pandemic uh, generated is in the performing arts sector. We know everything that uh, was uh, you know, happening with the, Uh, music, concert hall, uh, theaters that uh, had to stop their activity. So there was a lot of discussion, as you know, Matthias, around the world about how we can actually take this opportunity to innovate uh, in the yeah. performance sector. So we decided to create this uh, research group, bringing together all great professionals around the world, like yourself, Matthias, to discuss and exchange ideas and how we can actually design the, um, the future of performing arts from all the point of view, from uh, architecture, the way we create a, a space, a theater, a concert hall, and then, of course, on the way about the way we design new policies for culture. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting with this project, Future Stage is the title of the research group, to see you know, there is so much work that we have to do still to do, you know, and uh, in, in, in even just um, analyzing an issue, a problem, a topic from different parts of the world. Because when we talk about certain challenges here in Europe, we focus on certain priorities. But then when you talk about the same issues from Australia, South Africa, uh, there, wherever, you know, we still have so many different points of views. So, mm -hmm. It was interesting to see how we, we can um, generate a global discussion about these topics. And the outcome was this manifesto document, mm. uh, which is, is just, you know, 
um, you know, a way to start hopefully a wider uh, discussion about these topics in our community all around the world. The interesting thing to me is that um, um, when you think about this document and it talks about uh, how the boundary of um, uh, the performer and the audience, how that is changing, it talks about different types of jobs that there will be when you think about hybrid events and, and what, what types of um, uh, educational changes uh, one might need to accommodate for that. It is um, something that if I had read it or, or thought about it uh, two or three years ago, um, it would have been really a futuristic type of text. But going through the experience that we had in the past year, I think a lot of the things that are in the manifesto are in reach. And this is really amazing that um, the, the, if there is one thing that is positive coming out of this whole mess that we are in right now, it is that uh, there has been a... Um, in my opinion, a very uh, strong acceleration of um, innovation and embracing of digital technologies in our sector. And so um, the Future Manifesto is still a very out there kind of vision, but um, I think it is achievable. And this is the remarkable thing about the, the time that we live in. True, true, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the key message of the manifesto and now about this project is we need to enlarge the, 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 the group of stakeholders that are involved in this, in this kind of discussion. It's not just yeah. about talking with the musicians, artists, managers. It's about talking with the innovators, the tech experts, uh, uh, people that are working in the marketing communication. So it, it's about observing the entire area of the performing arts from different point of view, also unexpected point of views. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a very fascinating, uh, you know, uh, work the, the 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 one that we did with the with the group. And uh, again, I think that we need to move forward with this discussion, opening up to the world as much as possible, and uh, have the courage to look ahead. You know, what's going on in the next 20, 30 years is something that is actually connected to the present. We are mm -hmm. all focusing too much you know, on what we do tomorrow, but we need also to start talking about what we need to do in the next 20, 30 years. Yeah, right. The, the longer term vision. I mean, the, the, there's, this is a really bold statement to say performance is a human right. But when you think it through, um, uh, it, it, it is actually goes to, it, to the essence of what it means to be human. And um, I, from my perspective, I would, I would uh, probably even go so far to say that creativity is a human right. We are all born as creative beings, and the act of um, expressing that is a performative a uh, aspect, an act. And um, and and I, I think in what you what you talk about, I hear a lot the question of um, uh, stakeholders and enlarging the group of stakeholders, but also of relevance and the relevance for society um, uh, is something that I think is is very important for for what um, young musicians, young artists, um, what everyone is doing uh, in the arts space. Um, do you see this as a um, renewal of this idea that? Um, as an artist, you're also a little bit of maybe an activist uh, to some degree. Um, does that play a role in your thinking? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think that one of the most dangerous, let's say, uh, aspect here is that the majority of the people, and especially, of course, politicians, let's say, all around the world, they see it performing arts and culture, if you want, as entertainment, as just entertainment. Mm -hmm. and of course, we know it's not just about you know entertainment here. What we are also underlining with the opening of the manifesto is performing and performing arts is one of the most essential element of the way we 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 express you know, uh, emotions, ideas as as human beings, and we need to repositionate this 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 idea, you know, because mm -hmm. the risk is the is just that we are thinking and talking and discussing about music and art uh, in terms of, okay, what's the economical as uh, impact? Okay, what's, how many tickets you sold with your theater? Mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we have to um, re redefine again what is performing arts for, for the people? What's mm -hmm. it's the impact that performing arts are generating in the people? And, and this discussion has to involve 
also and especially i would say the new generations the next generations mm -hmm. that are sometimes disconnected from many of the debates that we are you know offering in the cultural sector and it's exactly about what you were saying matthias is to make performing arts is, is so connected to the to the idea of uh, community, to the idea of citizenships. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that's why, you know, also here in Cremona, we are trying to reaffirm this idea that an artist, as I was saying before, is a citizen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that you contribute to your community as a citizen and then as a violinist, as a manager, as a poet, whatever, but you are a citizen. And we need to, I believe, rediscover also this idea of um, global citizenship, you know, that uh, has been discussed so much all over the world over the next years, but is, is a little bit uh, an empty, let's say, definition sometimes. Uh -huh. you know? we, we should all um, you know, give, give them a real meaning to this definition of global mm -hmm. citizenship. And I think that a great input uh, will come from, uh, from the cultural community, uh, where mm -hmm. we have so so many artists, managers, academics that uh, are, you know, looking at their job as, as a part of a, a more wider no, uh, commitment and duty towards mm -hmm. the society. Yeah, I think this is beautiful. I mean, I cannot wait to meet you all in person uh, next February when I'll be uh, visiting Cremona um, to, uh, you know, work with you guys on, on a little workshop in the Innovation Lab. Um, so that's coming up um, uh, very soon. Um, Paolo, it was really wonderful to, to have talked to you. Um, I wish you uh, all the best um, for the, the coming months in, in continuing on that journey and making your mark there um, in a very special way. Um, for um, our audience out there, there will be um, links in the, in the comments below um, to all of the websites um, and initiatives we've mentioned. Um, uh, I encourage everyone to um, reach out to Paolo also um, on our Slack server where um, we're all, you know, com communing uh, uh, on the Karaya Music Tech uh, platform. But also if you have questions about what is going on in Cremona, I'm, I'm sure um, uh, they will be happy to, to um, answer any questions you have. Now, um, I want to uh, end by um, thanking you again, but also asking you um, um, uh, a question that I like to ask uh, my guests on this uh, on, on this series, and that is, um, if you think about um, the future, um, what is the thing that you most wish for um, for your field um, that hasn't been achieved yet um, that um, uh, would bring us forward tremendously, though? And and we haven't talked about this in advance, so uh, it's a very spontaneous thing. Sorry for uh, uh, no 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 absolutely. being so uh, intrusive. <laughs> This is a very, very good question. I think the first word I'm thinking is courage. We just need to be much more courageous, you know, in, in the way we just take the decision in, in our field, in every of our organization. And it's about, you know, we don't have to be worried about exploring new territories in, in a, uh, experimenting new models or new ways of how we manage, we organize our projects, institutions, organization, uh, in the cultural sector, it is it's not about you know always going to the, the in the in the take the easy decision and you know, also that you don't take any risk and people uh, is 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 okay with that you don't you won't have any a bad article the next day or you don't go against politics or wherever we are the cultural sector we should be super vibrant we we our power is creativity what you were saying before Matthias so let's just rediscover the energy of being creative and and just let's shake the society in a positive way and just you know to give them an opportunity through culture through heart to express themselves in the best way and, and this is about you know reconnecting again with the society most of the time and i'm saying this from a very very historical place now which seems to be so distant right now from the present you now and especially from the future but it's not true everyone is coming here is so fascinated, it's just so inspired by, by history. Of course, if we just keep these places empty, well, they can have a very nice tour, it's not, not to make any difference. We need to inspire through the past, through the heritage, but also connect 
this history with the present. And we are doing this year, opening up this place to the new generation too. So we just need to be, I think, a little bit more um, ready to, to experiment and explore the future uh, with a great sense you know, of, uh, of courage, I would say. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank you very much, Paolo. So um, to our audience, um, you see, um, be courageous, um, uh, try the new, um, and uh, also um, value what you have um, from the past. Um, we are looking forward to having your comments. Um, uh, we'll do our best to answer everything. Um, also, if you like uh, these conversations, sus subscribe to our channel and uh, don't be a stranger. Until soon. Bye-bye.